they thought that I was casting negative spells against them. And I wasn't. I was just speaking the truth. So don't call me whatever. Don't say this to me. Don't speak like that around me. And, I'm, and we'll be cool. Salut, bienvenue, and welcome to House of Azar, a space where we speak about spirituality and life and how those two things meet, a space where all are seen and all are welcomed. My name is Rashidi, and I'm the house mother of this house. So today we will speak about how I got the title witch. So I don't technically, or I don't really connect with this word. Um, I don't mind if you call me that if you don't have any other language but I would prefer root worker or anything of the African diaspora. Um, so yeah, it's a little story about how this all came to be. Um, so I am a professional dancer and dance teacher and I was raised in the church, uh, the Christian Pentecostal church to be exact. And um, my whole life I've always been attracted to the mystics and the the witchy or the sorcerer in the shows or the things that I watched or I read or things like that and that was always demonized in my house um, so that was something that was kind of personal to myself and once I got the freedom to leave that my my space I got the freedom to also explore my spirituality and what I believed in and how I wanted to mix my Christian faith with the other things that were interesting to me and yeah see what I can conjure up with all of in that. that journey I found my first crystal shop and I bought a crystal and after that it was just like you couldn't stop me from doing anything um, I thought that oh I have all of the magic in the world with my one little clear quartz crystal that I wore religiously until it broke well, at least until it came off of the, the chain that it was on. But I have it to this day, and I don't think that's something that I will ever let go. But that's neither, neither here nor there. I skip forward to moving to New York and living the professional dance life or dancer life, and me working really hard to manifest the life that I wanted for myself and my career and all of those things. And it was a really great life. It, it still is a really great life. I mean, it brought me here to France, um, and I am so blessed and so honored to have had that experience. But part of that experience was working at a job as a server, and I still thank all of the powers that be for that job because from the moment that I got that job, they supported any time that I needed off for a performance or a show or anything like that, and I really appreciate that because without them, I wouldn't be here right now. But whatever. In that job, it was a bit toxic. It was a bit dramatic. It was a bit dark, uh, literally. Um, and like I said, once I bought my first crystal, you couldn't stop me from buying the entire store. So I carried my crystals. I wore my crystals. I wrapped my head. I did, did all those things. But one thing that I think I was raised with or my mother instilled in me when I was a child was to surround yourself with people that you wanted to look like or to be like. And because that job was so toxic, I decided to start to pull away from a lot of people at this job and um, reaffirm the things that I wanted and keep trying to manifest the best version of my life that I wanted. And the people that I worked with didn't do that. They surrounded themselves with toxic people, people that casted negative spells on them in the sense that they spoke negative words to them and they allowed people to speak like that. And I didn't. I was really okay to tell, tell you, like, don't talk to me like that or don't say that to me or don't call me this or whatever the case may be. And a lot of people weren't, weren't willing to do that. So... Yeah, I used that job for what it was and it paid my bills and it did all of the things that it needed to do. But after that, that was it. It wasn't the place that I lived. And one day, so one day, uh, skipping forward again, um, I heard the rumor that I was a witch. Um, by the way, we all had to wear black. Everybody wore black, all black, whatever. I wore a turban every once in a while and things like that. And 
yeah, I guess that like gave into the witchy experience, but also, um, like I said, I affirmed myself with positive affirmations. I affirmed myself with not living in this negative toxic place. I used it for exactly what I needed it for. And then I left. And so I guess because my life seemed to be flourishing in a way that didn't, uh, didn't resonate with the people around me, they thought that I was casting negative spells against them. And I wasn't, I was just speaking the truth. So don't call me whatever. Don't say this to me. Don't speak like that around me and I'm, and we'll be cool. And I guess because I was willing to do that, it seemed like I was casting negativity towards them and that is not the kind of magic that I practice. I will always affirm you with the things that I know you are good at and all of the things that I want to manifest in your life. So, which are always, or I try to be as positive as possible. Um, so, skipping forward again, uh, the rumor continued, and so eventually I just leaned into it, and I was like, okay, well, if you want to call me a witch, I'm a witch. But I'm not going to call myself a witch. Um, but now when people say that, or like whisper words like that, um, or things like that, I'm, okay, cool. If that's what you... If that's the language that you want to use around me, cool. But I can transform the negative energy that you're throwing out with that word and turn it into something positive. For example, you're not going to want to be around me because of the, all of the stereotypes that you've created about what witches are in your mind. Uh, you don't want to be around me because I don't allow you to be this sappy negative person and all of this stuff around me. Um, so I, that is the way that I transform that. Um, granted, do I have powers? Uh, sure, I have ancestral powers in the sense that I know how to heal the body with the earth. I know how to speak life into people. I know how to speak life into things. Um, but all of us have this power. This is not something that is just um, personal. No, not personal. Isolated to me. This is something that we can all conjure up within ourselves so yeah uh, if you want to call me a witch a brusha a brucho a bruja or whatever you want to call me okay cool um i will be all of those things and more um so yeah if you have people around you that are calling you wit a witch uh, and you were you don't identify with this word or maybe you do a little bit i would say maybe research what witch looks like in your culture and see if that is a journey that you are interested in um, see if that exists in your family bloodline already and maybe you can connect with yourself in a deeper way just by this maybe negative thing that people are calling you um, there's also so much information on the interweb about what a witch is and what that whole culture is if that's something that you're interested in cool um, but yeah, I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you use all of your powers to your benefit. And until next time, stay beautiful. And like I always say, if you want to join the Royal House of Bazaar, leave a crown emoji in the comments. And also, if you have any cool stories about your, 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 I guess your coven or your your witchy group or your sorcery group or your magic-y group and you want to share those things i would love to hear about them also if you are in france and you understand english or you want somebody to practice english and you are into esotericism and all of these things definitely leave a comment in the comments because i would love to connect with you because right now i am the only one in this little town that i live in so yes gros bisous